Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Hey, everybody. Come on in and grab your coffee. Coffee with Scott Adams goes way better with actual coffee. Time for a simultaneous sip. Grab your mug, cup, or vessel. Mmm. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, we, we can do it again. I, I, I see some of you weren't ready. Okay. Grab your, grab your vessel. Simultaneous sipping. It's going to be good. Uh, oh, let's, let's bunch it up. We're going to do simultaneous sipping followed by a virtual high five. Ready? Get your cup. Mm. High five. Okay. <clears throat> Any smoke in my area? Well, the, the other day it was it was whiteout conditions here. You couldn't see the uh, you couldn't see the mountain that is my primary view. Yesterday it cleared up about eighty percent. Um, so I've been checking in with my friends and contacts in the North Bay. Some of you might know that uh, Charles Schultz uh, house where his widow, Jeannie Schultz, lived, burned down, which was a tragedy, um, like one of the bigger tragedies in terms of uh, not loss of life. Obviously, that was a bigger tragedy, all the people who were dying up there. Uh, but in terms of a historical site, if you're a cartoonist, that's about the saddest day you could ever imagine. Uh, I've actually stayed at that, at her guest house, so the the Charles Schultz uh, homestead where he spent most of his life burned down, um, and not too long ago I stayed in the guest house there. Uh, yes, I'm okay. So far, I don't think the uh, the flames are going to reach my town. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is, um, based on this article, so in Politico... There's an article about the power of Trump's positive thinking, and we're going to talk about that. Now, uh, I discussed this in Win Bigly, my book, which will be out October 31st. Uh, I've got a chapter on this, and it's based on the fact that um, Donald Trump's minister, when he, when he was a kid, was Norman Vincent Peale one of the most successful uh, self-help type authors in American history. In fact, you could say he, he was sort of the self-help guy when I was a kid. And his books, uh, which, no, which did influence President Trump, he says so, um, were about essentially thinking your way to success. So he was the first person who told me, because I also was exposed to his work when I was a kid. Um, he was the first one who told me that that you could change your situation simply by the way you thought. In other words, if you change the way you thought, you could also change your environment, essentially. Now, when I say change your environment, that means could mean getting rich and you know moving to a different place or whatever. But the the idea is that the power of the mind was under... Um, was underappreciated, and if you simply thought optimistically, you could just think yourself into good situations. Now, Norman Vincent Peale was so influential on President Trump that he actually officiated at Trump's first marriage. And one of the interesting things about Norman Vincent Peale is that beyond being a minister and beyond being the positive-thinking um, guru of all time, he was also accused of being a hypnotist. That's right. He was so influential, so persuasive, that in his time people thought he might be a hypnotist. <clears throat> now, is it a coincidence that President Trump has this um, weird optimism that never seems to turn off, even when everything is going against him? As the article talks, uh, in the article in Politico... It talks about how any normal politician would have just put his tail between his legs and, and run away with the various scandals and problems that President Trump had along the election campaign trail. 
But he just shook it all off. <laughs> he just shook it off. He just said, well, I'll just go be president anyway. And that worked out for him. Now, I want to tie a few ideas together. But the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, look at look at the pattern. The, the interesting thing about Trump ascending to the presidency is that people aren't even sure if he was the greatest business person in the world, but yet he succeeded wildly. Um, and nobody thought he had the right credentials to be president, at least not in classic terms, and yet he succeeded there too. So when you see somebody exceeding, succeeding beyond all expectations, um, I've often said that's a sign of a master persuader, but it also is probably a sign of somebody influenced by uh, a Norman Vincent Peale-like personality. And so for someone to reach that far and succeed against those odds is very unusual, and it takes a certain mindset to do it. Now, the Politico article, of course, uh, tried to figure out how to make this bad, and so their spin on it was, well, is it just positive thinking? Or has he talked himself into a delusion and he doesn't know the difference between reality and, and what he's imagining about his success in the future? Yeah, you have to stretch pretty hard to get there. But um, the best way to understand the things he says that don't sound true is that he's, he's literally thinking his way into a new reality. And the, the facts are not as important as you think. <laughs> What's important is what happens next. It is far less important what has already happened. Let me put this another way. The past doesn't exist. <clears throat> Let me say that again. The past doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's only in our minds. So if, so if President Trump says, blah, blah, fact... And you say, that's not true. That's not what happened. The truth is that it doesn't exist either way. The, pa the past doesn't exist now. And so a master persuader says, what does exist? Let's work with that. What does exist is my imagination. And if I imagine a better future, is that going to help? Now, I think at this point... There's enough you know, valid scientific research to show that having a positive attitude and confidence or even pretending to have those things um, does help your performance. All right? So in a very normal way, it helps have a positive attitude. So there's, there's, I don't think there's any question about that that's left in the scientific community. But I think this, just for fun, we're going to extend the thought a little bit and bring in the idea of affirmations. Now, you, some of you know I've written about affirmations, and it's the idea that you just focus on a certain thing you want to happen, and you repeat it in your head, and you visualize it over and over. Um, in my life, I've done a number of affirmations, and I've written about this at length, but um, very unlikely things happened when I used affirmations. For example, I used affirmations to try to become a famous cartoonist when the odds of that were so small. I mean, the odds of becoming a famous cartoonist as a goal, it's just so small. But it happened. And it happened at a time I was doing the affirmations and focusing on it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that affirmations cause magic to happen. But I will give you this context. Humans did not evolve to understand reality. You can see that in the election, right? You can see that half of the country thinks they're living under a, a Hitler-like dictatorship uh, in, in the Trump regime. Half the people think we're entering a golden age where the economy is doing great and you know we're all happy and things are looking good. Those aren't even the different same reality, but the facts are the same. You know, the underlying if there is some objective reality. That hasn't changed, but we're all putting our own interpretation on it. 
So you're seeing a religion that I don't see. You're seeing a politician I don't see. You're interpreting why things are happening in ways I don't see. So we have different movies running in our heads all the time. Now, in the this, in this scenario where none of us really understand reality, because we didn't evolve to, we never needed to understand reality. It wasn't important to reproduction. You know, a clam doesn't understand reality, but it can make more baby clams if, if there's such a thing as a baby clam. Um, and, and if you look at all the animals, the animals can reproduce just fine, but I don't think my cat, my dog, and I share the same view of what reality is. Okay, So understanding reality is absolutely unimportant. Now, it is important if you walk in front of a truck and the truck kills you. So I'm not saying that reality doesn't affect your life. I'm just saying that we all have completely different movies in our heads. And in that scenario, there may be some kind of steering mechanism. In other words, there may be some way that you can guide yourself through this movie of yours. Maybe you're just uh, writing the script the way you want to see it. And I, I would suggest that just as a possibility, based on my weird experience with um, affirmations, now, oh, then let me tell you a few more affirmations that worked out for me. Uh, I also did an affirmation that I would have a number one, number one New York Times best-selling book. Um, this was before I ever wrote a book, so I had never written a book. And when I wrote my first one, I did affirmations on. Uh, on the idea that it would be a number one New York Times best-selling book. Now, I don't have to tell you that that's pretty rare. You know, every author wants to be a New York Times best-selling author, number one. Uh, but I was. I, you know, my book became a number one New York Times bestseller. Um, many of you know my story about losing my ability to speak. And for about three years, I did affirmations to say that uh, I, Scott Adams, will speak perfectly. And I couldn't speak for about three years. I had a bizarre uh, vocal disorder. But even though the, the disorder was considered incurable when I first got diagnosed, I found a cure. All right? Now, other people found it too, but most people didn't. You know, I found the one doctor in the world who had figured out a semi-experimental surgery. I had the surgery. It didn't work for everybody, but it worked for me. Um, and I won't tell you my whole history, but there are a number of times, um, there were a number of times that I did affirmations on things that just seemed impossible. What are the odds you would become one of the top cartoonists in the world just because you know, you were saying that you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty weird. What are the odds that you'd become a number one best-selling author with no experience writing? Pretty low, right? What are the odds that you would have an incurable problem that you would not only cure, but on the other end of it, you would come out better? So the voice that you're hearing right now is not actually my original voice. It's an improved version. Because, um, you know, I did a lot of uh, vocal training until I could produce a better sound. So um, the surgery is what cured the voice. But on top of that, I did a lot of vocal training. So I know how to just produce better sound with my equipment. So I actually came out ahead. And in fact, a lot of people comment on these uh, periscopes. One of the things they say is, uh, you know, I like your voice, which nobody ever said before. Trust me. Uh, so, in my life, I've seen the power of positive thinking, which did start with Norman Vincent Peale with me, the same as it did with President Trump. So, while other people were seeing President Trump saying uh, just crazy stuff, um, what I saw was Norman Vincent Peale. What I saw was affirmations lived out loud. It didn't matter to me that the things he said were not true about, wait for it, were not true about, wait for it, the past. So any fact-checking that didn't fit the past, 
I discounted because the past doesn't exist. <laughs> right? And I have the same mindset that the past doesn't exist. I'm not a, I'm not a slave to the past. I'm not a victim to the past. In fact, I am so much not a victim of the past that, that years ago I developed the idea that if you got a letter in the mail, the contents of the letter would be variable in a Schrodinger's cat kind of a way until you looked at it. So my view of reality is a reality doesn't harden until, until it happens. Until then, everything's on the table. There, nothing is ruled out until you observe it. And even then, sometimes it, it changes. You know, we, we saw the, the situation with the Vegas gunman. We all thought we knew the information, and then it all, the reality just all changed. Right? It happens all the time. So in my reality, um, the facts are very malleable. They're not fixed. You know, the past doesn't exist, and what might happen tomorrow, everything's in play. Um, so that's just sort of a, a worldview. So that worldview has allowed me to um, enter different fields and through the power of positive thinking, largely, do things that um, any reasonable person would have told me not to do. Let me give you another example. In, t in 2015, I risked my entire career and reputation for the rest of my life by making a prediction that Donald Trump would win in a landslide. This is when everyone thought he was a clown. This is 2015, long before even his, his best supporters were starting to get on board. There were a few like Ann Coulter, I think Mike Cernovich, you know, there, there were a handful of us who were early. But I, I made a big, big gamble with my career, not only that I would be right, but that I would essentially be changing careers, you know, at my age. Um, not not changing entirely, but moving into a new field that I had no experience with. Now, I've done this before. I moved into uh, writing with no experience. I moved into cartooning with no experience. I've got um, a, I started some restaurants with no experience. They, they failed, but not because of my lack of experience. There were, there were other factors. Um, and now I have a startup that's just about ready to do something amazing. I'll share that with you later. So all of these things had one thing in common. I wasn't really qualified for any of them, but they all worked out. <clears throat> now, there were plenty of things that haven't worked out, so, so it also helps to try lots of stuff. But weirdly, the biggest things I tried, the things with the biggest potential payoff, were the ones that worked. They were also the ones I did the most affirmations about. So when you see President Trump with this unnatural optimism, you know, his, you know, if you ask him, uh, how's, how's the White House going? And all the people are reporting, it's chaos. It's, you know, things are a mess. And if you ask him, he's like, it's great. Never been better. You know, th th things couldn't get any better. That economy, that's great. We're going to make some jobs. We're going to do all this. And you say to yourself, well, is that just a bunch of BS? Is he being a con man now? Because he knows this isn't quite true. Is he, is he just, you know, is it just, uh, is he crazy? He doesn't know it's not true. So people are wondering, why does he say these things that don't seem to match with what I and all the other observers are seeing? What, why does he do this? And now you're starting to understand the reason. He does it because he's a creating the future. You think he's describing, you think he's describing what the way things are. When he says the economy is like better than ever before, or jobs are coming back, and then the fact checkers say, no, actually there's not many jobs coming back, and well, actually the economy was strong before. The fact checkers are missing the entire show. The show is the president is describing the future by pretending it's the, it's the present. That's the power of positive thinking. That's how it's done, right? It's right out of Norman Vincent Peale's playbook. You just simply think your way into a more positive world. You see that he's done it with his, his own career. 
you know, he, he got out of these incredible bankruptcies. He got out of all these scandals during the campaign. This man has escaped more fatal traps than anyone you've ever seen. I mean, truly fatal traps. And, and he walks through them like, like he's asbestos in fire, right? Um, and, and I would suggest that when you interpret that as, hey, how come he can't, he can't see the facts? Why is he full of BS? Why is he trying to con us? When we know the, we know the past doesn't match what he just said. Well, I'll remind you again. The past doesn't actually exist, and you're not bound by it. Sure, it can inform you, and sure, you need to know what the past was, and sure, you need to avoid trying to make the same mistakes. Yeah, there's some small utility to the past. But if you're bound by it, if you're shackled by it, if you're a slave to the past, you miss all the good stuff. Donald Trump is not a slave to the past. You want an example? Pussygate. When the Pussygate thing erupted, that was the past coming back like a like a chain around his neck. Boom. And every one of us watched that show and we said, my God, he got so far. And then the chain came out from the ground, from the past, and grabbed him. And when you saw the chain grab him by the neck, the pussy gay scandal, you know you said to yourself, it's over. The past got him. But do you know what Donald Trump said? Now President Trump. I'll tell you what he said. He said what I would have said. He said what Norman Vincent Peale would have said. He said what Donald Trump said. He said, past doesn't exist. And then he made it so. He simply made the past not matter. He did that to you. You thought it mattered. And then he showed you it didn't. It was like the greatest magic trick ever played. Except it wasn't magic. It was technique. All right? He simply willed the past into oblivion. He did that. Notice how um, President Trump is, is so often talking about the future. You know, make America great again. That's the future. Build a wall in the future. Bring back the jobs in the future. Everything is about what he's going to do. But at the same time, he's telling you everything is great. Everything is you know, working well. The economy is working well. Now you say to yourself, isn't it bad that what he's saying doesn't match exactly what we're seeing? No. It is technique. He is literally thinking the economy to a higher level. And I'm not even joking about that a little bit. You are watching one of the world's greatest affirmations, reality-shaping personalities of all time. Maybe the most um, effective reality shaper of all time. Steve Jobs was up there, but he had more of a company view versus you know Trump now has a world view. Um, and you're watching him turn the economy into an optimism engine. You're watching him use that same uh, reality-shaping optimism when he's dealing with North Korea and with ISIS. Think about what those people, what the ISIS people are thinking when they look at him, when he's so positive that they're going to be wiped out and he's created momentum. And uh, just recently, uh, and just recently, you saw a thousand ISIS fighters surrender instead of fight to the death. When you when you see ISIS start to surrender instead of fight to the death, that means he's in their head. It means that they don't see their their plan as being the winning plan. They already see him as the eventual winner. Uh, and what people laughed when he uh, labeled ISIS, you know, evil losers. And I said, no, that's more important than you think. All right, he he is branding the future and making everybody walk right into it. So when you see the president ignoring the past, which is usually what the facts are, facts are the past, right? So the fact that happens at this moment, boom, it's already the past. All right, it's because the the president is is now a new thing. So um, that's one of the signs of a uh, of a 
master persuader, someone who, who sees reality as malleable, because to a large degree it really is. Uh, reality does change with our expectations. Let me say that in a way that doesn't sound like I'm talking about magic. Um, in, in the economy, if people expect the economy to do well, then businesses invest because they say, hey, everybody expects it to do well next year. I think it will do well because we all expect it. So then they invest. And what does that make happen? Well, it makes the economy do well because everybody invested. That's what makes an economy run. So his shaping of the future in our minds, his relentless positivity, isn't a crazy man in a, in a standard world. In the in the two dimensional view of the world, where most people are stuck, they see a world that's fixed, and then they see this guy who doesn't seem to be connected to it, at least in terms of how he describes facts. He seems to be sort of off in his own his own thing, you know, with making up his own facts and making up a you know a magical world in his mind. And if you live in the two D world, that's sort of what you see, and it looks dangerous and it looks. Um, you don't understand it, and you don't know how this could be helping. It doesn't look like other presidents have done it, except maybe Reagan a little bit. And so it's a little off-putting. But if you understand that what he's doing is he's moving us collectively to a different mindset, and that mindset makes everything happen, right? It makes the economy hum. It makes people have peace instead of war. It, uh, you know, it, it does a lot of things. Um, so, uh, anyway, so that was what I was going to talk about today. I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, read the political article that I tweeted about. You can find it in my, my, my tweets. Uh, and I'm going to sign off now and talk to you later. Remember, don't win small. If you can buy my book, Win Bigly, and pre-order it now, bye.